In 2068, the Blue Star was destroyed by nuclear sewage, and humanity set out into space, splitting into countless new worlds. These worlds lasted for hundreds of years of peace until another disaster came and completely collapsed. In the chaos of hundreds of worlds, Fong Siki, who had been picking up garbage for 17 years, suddenly inherited the Phoenix Star and became the king of this world. Fong Siki lacks knowledge and mental strength. Her greatest wish is to marry that noble and elegant man, but the man killed her on the day of their marriage, preparing to inherit the throne. After being reborn, Fong Siki kicked away the scumbag, turned his love brain into ashes, and threw it into the sea. He began to study wholeheartedly, vowing to make the planet bigger and stronger. Before working hard to learn Emperor Star. A little trash with zero education level, what kind of imperial skill can they learn? Federal 23 Stars A useless person without spiritual power, no matter how much you practice, you will only be a little Suanio who knows how to play with fire. Uncharted Star I'm already preparing for war, so I'm just starting to cram. After studying hard in Star Wars, Fong Siki, whose spiritual power surpassed the 4S level, piloted a self-developed cruiser to jump 100,000 light-years, defeated 20 stars, captured Emperor Star, turned the unknown star into fireworks in the solar system, and planted the flag of Phoenix Star throughout the entire galaxy. Not fighting is my respect for peace. War, too. Quotations from the Phoenix Queen keywords of the novel. Reborn me inherits a planet without pop-ups, reborn me inherits a planet. Download complete txt, reborn me inherits a planet. Latest chapter reading. Chapter 1. Join if you can't fight. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 1 Join if you can't fight in 2023, residents located between 31 degrees and 46 degrees north latitude, disregarding the opposition of a world, deliberately discharged nuclear wastewater, endangering billions of marine life and causing small dot scale mutations. In 2025, nuclear radiation enveloped the world, and dazzling blue stars were corroded by acid rain becoming dull and lifeless, like dusty pearls, no longer shining as before. In 2036, there will be widespread animal and plant mutations, rampant competition for living space, while humanity is still in an endless civil war. In 2058, the evolving humans regained control, but as far as they could see, the world was already riddled with holes, and they had no choice but to set out into space. In 2068, the Fong family spent 10 years searching for a planet that was extremely similar to Earth. As discoverers, they officially named the planet Phoenix, symbolizing their family. At this point, the Milky Way galaxy gave birth to thousands or even hundreds of worlds, most of which joined the federal imperial system, led by Emperor Star, and maintained peace for hundreds of years, enabling humanity to reproduce and flourish unprecedentedly until the year 986 in the interstellar calendar. The solar system has undergone pathological changes, with hundreds of planets destroyed within a billion light-years, and the remaining ones entering a period of drying up. Only Phoenix has survived the disaster, but it has attracted the coveting of other planets, including Emperor Star. Just as the king, queen, and their children were all assassinated, Phoenix became a planet with no legitimate heir. Just as it was about to be ruled by Emperor, the appearance of a girl shattered their conspiracy. In a daze, Fong Siki heard the crackling sound of a large fire burning and the heat of being in the sea of flames. Hot. Can you still feel hot after death? As the Queen of the Phoenix, she married her beloved on the day of her adulthood, which should have been a source of joy and joy. However, when the wedding ceremony came to an end, Waiting for her was not the happiness of embracing spring, but a completely opposite dead end. Fong Siki vividly remembered the excruciating pain of Zhou Qing Fong pushing himself downstairs and being stabbed in the chest by the phoenix. That kind of pain is not only physical, but also psychological. Like falling into a cold river of 30,000 meters, cold and piercing to the bone, while being submerged in endless despair. The person she had been in love with since childhood, the one she was willing to give up the throne, 
ended her life with her own hands after marrying him with great joy. Phoenix Thorn, a weapon specially made for the Fong family, doesn't even give her a chance to save her. It seems that I really want her to die. However, before her death, she realized that Zhou Qin Feng had killed her best friend and her grandfather in order to gain her trust and make her the queen. Grandpa is her only relative in this world, how dare he? When Feng Siki thought of these, he still couldn't accept them. Fortunately, she has already died, so she doesn't have to face the guilt of her loved ones who died because of her, nor the pain of betrayal from her loved ones. Feng Siki was trapped in the deep darkness, feeling scorching and suffocating. She did nothing and waited quietly for the arrival of the Grim Reaper. Until, bang! With a loud bang that seemed to explode in his ear, Fong Siki was startled and bounced back. Fong Siki suddenly woke up, panting heavily and sweating profusely. She looked up at the dilapidated house filled with waste and realized something. She quickly turned her head and saw the flames burning brightly outside the framed windows, almost climbing onto them. How could it be? How could she be in her own company? It's said to be a company, but in reality, the developer didn't have the money to run away and left behind this pile of reinforced concrete, becoming a place for wanderers like her to play. Playful, not suitable for living, but suitable for her generation of garbage collectors to make a living, making this the cornerstone of entrepreneurship. Just three days after listing, all the waste was moved here and burned by the rebels. Burned. Fong Siki looked around at the familiar scrap metal and ran to the window incredulously. Isn't this the night she was discovered to be a child of the Fong family and brought back to the palace? Fong Siki quickly lowered his head, looked and touched his chest and abdomen. Intact, without a big hole or blood. Did she go back a year ago? Fong Siki thought of this and felt both angry and amused. Can't she choose a better time when encountering such an incredible thing as rebirth? She would have been reborn a few minutes earlier, so she wouldn't have experienced this big fire and no one would have known that she belonged to the Fong family. She could still be a happy little waste. She needs to be reborn a few days earlier, so that she can find Bai Gui and let him protect the king and queen well so as not to cause chaos in the world. She needs to be reborn a few years earlier so that she can go to the palace to recognize her relatives and enjoy happiness with her grandfather. On this day of rebirth, do you tell her that she has a throne in her life, or is there a calamity in her life? Feng Siki thought of killing Zhou Qingfeng and covered his abdomen, still feeling a faint pain. Zhou Qingfeng intentionally approached herself, accepted her confession, and even agreed to marry her, all because of her power, right? Marrying her, he is the second in line heir of the Phoenix Star. As soon as she died, he became a legitimate king. Before getting married, her butler and guardian Bai Xian told her about it, saying that she was still young and not in a hurry to get married, but she didn't listen at the time. The reason why Feng Siki didn't listen was because he believed that the young master of the Zhou family whom she liked must also love her before agreeing to her proposal, rather than because of inheritance rights. She naively believed that power had no temptation, and love could resist mountains and seas. Now it seems that she overestimated Zhou Qing Feng and underestimated power. Power Feng Siki watched the high temperature shrink the plastic bottle she had worked hard to pick up, and watched the fire burning into the window, igniting her own clothes, indifferent and unmoved. She is a child of the Fong family, born with the Phoenix bloodline, and is not afraid of fire at all. This also means that the throne originally belonged to her. Do you want to repeat the path of monarchy from the previous life? Stepping out of this building will expose her identity, and someone will push her to the pinnacle of power. When Fong Siki hesitated, he heard his grandfather's voice in a daze. Fong Siki listened attentively and realized that her grandfather was really calling her. He must have come over worried because he saw that he hadn't been home for a long time. Fong Siki lowered his gaze as he thought of his grandfather who had been killed by him in the previous life, as well as Zhou Qing Fong who had killed him. Since the throne belongs to her, no one wants to compete with her. Fong Siki was afraid that her grandfather would rush in to find her, 
so he quickly reached out and extinguished the flames on his clothes, walking towards the stairs. But as she walked up the stairs and saw the raging fire rushing down the passage, she realized that what she had just done to extinguish the fire was a bit redundant. Foam Siki looked at the big fire that was about to devour everything, raised an eyebrow, and walked straight down. There's no way, if you jump off the second floor, you'll either die or be disabled. It's safer to take the stairs. Foam Siki ran out of the abandoned building through the sea of fire, and all his clothes were burned off. She picked up a snake skin bag containing waste on the ground, wrapped it around her body casually, and was about to find her grandfather when she saw seven or eight fighter jets in the air, fighting against those rebels. The sudden deaths of the king and queen, as well as internal and external troubles on Phoenix, have led to the military resorting to brutal force to suppress these rebels in an effort to resolve them as quickly as possible. So they set fire everywhere if they couldn't fight. The entire abandoned building complex is now ablaze with several flames, and soon this grassy area will be burned down. Foam Siki searched around anxiously and shouted, Grandpa, Grandpa. This group of bastards better not mess with her grandfather, otherwise the first thing she does when she takes office is to copy their lair. Foam Siki chased towards the battlefield and indeed saw Grandpa who had fallen not far away. Probably the little thug made fun of her grandfather and was chased and beaten by the army, so he left him here. Foam Siki saw his grandfather who had been dead for half a year and was now living in front of him. He was so excited that he shouted and ran over, suddenly feeling a huge sense of oppression. Feeling the strong wind and aura, Foam Siki reached out to block his eyes and turned his head to look at the huge object falling from the sky. The military A.class first.class aircraft landed overwhelmingly on this barren land, appearing very abrupt. Foam Siki was taken aback when he saw the familiar aircraft. She watched as she stepped down from the aircraft, dressed in a black high.class military uniform, and walked with strong steps towards her tall man, calmly accepting fate's arrangements without being surprised or pleased. The man looked at his disheveled face in front of him, completely naked, wrapped in dirty in torn cloth bags, with short hair. He didn't know if it was a boy or a girl's child. In short, he said, come with me. By Shu, her former butler and guardian's brother. After succinctly speaking the dialect, I left without caring about the wishes and lives of others. Foam Siki looked at the uncompromising General Bai and shouted, Can you also bring my grandfather with you? If you can't refuse or escape, then strive for more for yourself. Unexpectedly, Bai Shu didn't turn his head back and didn't answer her at all. Foam Siki looked at Bai Shu's undecided figure, and then at the two upright and serious soldiers with a plus mental strength beside him, keeping up honestly. As the saying goes, if you can't win, join. Rather than being dragged in, she should leave on her own. When Foam Siki entered the cabin door, the aircraft took off without stopping. End of this chapter. Chapter 2. Soul Air. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 2 Soul Air by Shu's emotional intelligence was slightly inferior, but he was recognized by the Phoenix Star as the most powerful general in combat. He had a bad temper and was straightforward in everything he did, without so much thought. Therefore, just helping my younger brother solve a few rebellions on the way back, I happened to see this person rushing out of the fire. Even if I roughly guessed his identity, I still didn't answer much. Waiting for the palace. Seeing the child's hesitant expression, Bai Shu was too lazy to explain to him. He grabbed his hair and directly took the aircraft off, threw it into the medical room, and then turned around and left. Foam Siki looked at Bai Shu's cold back, then at the young doctor dressed in white who came over, but didn't jump up and down like last time. Finally, he was pinned down on the stage by two soldiers to complete the task. This time she honestly accepted the doctor's examination and cooperated with the blood drawing program of the treatment equipment. Not afraid of fire is just a characteristic of the Fong family. Whether she is a child of the Fong family or not still needs to be verified by DNA, after all, 
she is just a criminal and there is no genetic data for her on the super system. During the inspection at Feng Siki. In another room outside the medical room, her information has been synchronized to the holographic screen. The detailed information on the holographic screen is Name C. Chi Gender Female age 17 years old Physical condition Malnutrition spirit level None Education level None Criminal record None Illegal records 63 instances of illegal group fights, 106 instances of non-dot compliance with traffic rules, and 239 instances of running red lights. Hazard Level Level 0 Bai Shu leaned back in the chair, legs resting on the table, and upon seeing the information, he unexpectedly said, it's actually a girl. He always thought he was a little boy. The man beside Bai Shu did not answer his words. The man was dressed in a decent dark gray suit, slightly lifting his chin to look at the information on the holographic screen, making the sharp jawline very prominent, and the deep and three-dot-dimensional facial features more like finely carved and chiseled perfection. He sat upright in the chair, exuding a meticulous and rigorous demeanor. At the age of thirty, he exuded a calm demeanor of fifty or sixty, as if there were nothing in the palace that he could not solve. After reading the materials, Bai Shu continued, this little thing doesn't have much ability, but he has a quite big temper. How dare a useless person without mental energy fight in a group? It's a miracle that she can live to such a big age. The man heard Bai Shu's words and looked at the quiet girl in the medical room. Feng Xing, report the blood test results. The voice is calm, like the uninteresting wind in the deep mountains, yet it carries a few distinct distinctions. It sounds good and also gives people peace of mind. The Phoenix Super Intelligent AI system received his command and said gently and without emotion, Good Major General Bai. Bai Gui, the second young master of the Bai family, and the younger brother of General Bai Shu. He is the king's super bodyguard and butler, and everything in the palace, except for the king and queen, is under his command. Even the prime minister has to give him three points of face when he comes. Feng Xing received instructions from Bai Gui and displayed two pictures on the holographic screen. Major General Bai, according to blood tests, both Siki and Queen are of AB blood type, with a genetic similarity of 97%. Is she related to the king? Bai Yan asked after him Feng Xing replied, her genetic similarity with the king is 98%. This means that she is not their child. An expected outcome. Feng Xing paused for a moment before continuing, it is certain that this girl named Si Qi is the child of the king. What? The two brothers of the Bai family looked up in astonishment. Feng Xing changed the image on the holographic screen. Siki and the king have completed a recessive DNA match, and this DNA strand is a unique phoenix bloodline. Testing can be wrong, genes can be fake, but the phoenix bloodline cannot replicate. It is a symbol of the Fong family, and only direct relatives can inherit it. There is currently no other person in the universe besides the Fong family who possesses this special bloodline. This also means that the 17.year.old girl in the medical room now is the only recognized heir to the Phoenix Star, the Federal 20 Stars and Emperor Stars. Bai Shu was stunned for a while, looking at his younger brother next to him. What do you plan to do? After a moment of silence and not responding to his brother's question, Bai Yen confirmed and asked Feng Xing, can you be certain that she is the king's child? Feng Xing said, General Hui Bai, I am very certain. The two children of the king and queen passed away mysteriously two years ago, and now the phoenix star is in an unknown state. According to the Federal Interstellar Code, planets without legal heirs will be ruled by Emperor Star in one year. Upon hearing Feng Xing's words, Bai Ting stood up and said, Let's go. Bai Xu asked him, Where are you going? Bai Ting lowered the curtain to look at him. Meet the queen. Bai Xu, who had just plucked the queen's hair, said. 
Foam Siki saw by Gue again, sucking on his finger that had just been bled. She was disheveled and still holding her fingers. When she saw her handsome butler, she was stunned. She must be so foolish now, like a big fool. Bai Ting looked at the girl with big black and white eyes, still looking at him, and said to the doctor, why don't we do wound repair? Wound repair. Just a needle puncture, does it also require bioremediation? Dr. Su Rong heard Bai Gui's words and looked at another girl who saw General Bai unable to move her legs. He had no doubt and took out a cell regeneration agent to treat the rapidly healing wound on the girl's finger. Fong Siki looked down at the doctor who carefully treated his wound, and then looked up again at the noble and low dot Ki Bai Chi. Bai Gui, a young major general with a spiritual strength of 3s, no one knows why he became the king's bodyguard and her butler. And absolutely loyal. After Zhou Qingfeng killed himself, he intended to persuade the arriving Bai Gui to support him, but he refused without hesitation. Feng Siki still remembers the sentence Bai Yan said to Zhou Qingfeng before losing consciousness. You should be aware of the cost of assassinating the queen. Assassinating the queen will lead to the extermination of the clan. She didn't know if Bai Gui had exterminated the Zhou clan, but she knew that even if Bai Gui let Phoenix Star be ruled by Emperor Star, he would have cleared Zhou Qingfeng. Feng Siki looked at Bai Qi and suddenly realized that he wasn't that annoying anymore. Bai Xu frowned as he looked at the girl who was staring at his brother without even turning her eyes. Do these flower enthusiasts really want to become their queen? Do you still need to give orders to him? Bai Xu said displeased, I'll go home and see my mom first. Remember to come back for lunch tomorrow. He really doesn't want to stay in this broken palace for a moment. Mind her, if she doesn't get promoted for a day, she can't manage him for a day. After Bai Xu finished speaking, he waved his hand and left. Feng Siki glanced at Bai Xu who had walked away, then withdrew his gaze to look at Bai Xu. White. Feng Siki was thinking that it would be better to call him by butler or by major general now, when a soldier ran in and said, by major general, General Zhou is here. Mr. Zhou. Feng Siki thought about who would be this week, and a familiar figure entered the medical room. Feng Siki was stunned and his pupils trembled when he saw the man entering. Zhou Qing Feng. Feng Siki looked at Zhou Qingfeng's exquisitely beautiful face with frameless glasses, and instinctively covered what seemed to be a painful abdomen. Bai Yan noticed her movements and asked the girl whose face suddenly turned pale. What's wrong? Upon hearing Bai Yan's inquiry, Zhou Qingfeng, who was about to speak, looked directly at the dirty and out-of-place child in the room. Feng Siki rubbed his hand against his stomach and tried to ignore Zhou Qingfeng's gaze on him. He looked up at the caring Bai Yan and smiled awkwardly. Perhaps you're hungry. Are your hungry little faces turning pale? Bai Yan didn't think much about her malnutrition. He said to Zhou Qing Feng, who came over in the evening, Mr. Zhou, regarding the matter of the king and queen, we will discuss it another day. Is it necessary to postpone the handling of the remains of the king and queen because this child is hungry? Zhou Qingfeng glanced at the child in the room again and didn't ask much. Okay, I'll wait for General Bai when you're free before coming over. Bai Ting nodded and asked the soldiers to escort him out, then said to the girl, follow me. Feng Siki was on guard against Zhou Qingfeng when he suddenly heard Bai Qian's words and immediately took steps to follow. Her butler still has a sense of security and needs to hold her thighs tightly. Zhou Qingfeng left the medical room with them, his eyes slightly fixed as he watched the child running along the way closely following Bai Yan. It's not easy for this child to make Bai Yan so attentive. Zhou Qingfeng looked at their backs and, at the soldier's reminder, reached out to push the glasses on the bridge of his nose and left the palace. End of this chapter Chapter 3 The Gods Do Not Love It you are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 3 The gods do not love it Feng Siki followed by Gui back to the main hall of the harem and saw the shadow of the phoenix under his feet. He reflexively looked up. 
In the center of the large building in the lobby stands a huge wudong tree made of bronze. Its trunk passes through the glass partition on the second floor, and the branches extend up on the second floor platform wantonly. At the top of this wudong is a phoenix totem carved in stained glass. What Feng Siki saw was not the lifelike phoenix on the top, but the wudong tree. She looked for a long time until the person in front noticed something unusual and stopped. The room was completely silent. Feng Siki asked lightly, General Bai, I don't like this tree. Can I pull it up? Bai Yen looked at the girl with a bad complexion, and then at the bronze tree in the main hall. You should rest now. A magnetic and low-pitched voice, succinctly stating. Foam Siki was startled to wake up upon hearing his words. This tree has been bigger than her for so long. She's just an outsider, why bother pulling it out? Foam Siki realized his mistake and closed his mouth, saying no more. Early the next morning. Foam Siki was awakened by Bai Chi, and like in the previous life, he put on the clothes he had prepared for himself and followed him to the front hall. The palace was planned according to the layout of the former and the latter. Although the two places are separated by a garden, the garden is still quite large and takes five or six minutes to walk slowly. Foam Siki walked on this road again, feeling still uncertain in his heart. He didn't know what Bai Xian was going to take him for, so he could only remind himself to be mute later. Now she's just a garbage picker, not a queen. They're talking about national affairs, which has nothing to do with her. Thinking of this, Feng Siki felt a little relieved. She looked at the rising sun and the great building getting closer in front of her. After more than 900 years, this building is still so magnificent, which shows how brave and forward-looking the people who built it back then were. Over 900 years ago, her ancestors brought only a few hundred remaining people to this place, where they lived peacefully and became the current planetary power. Over the past 900 years, it has been invincible and blessed by heaven, allowing it to once again avoid the solar crisis and become one of the wealthiest planets in the solar system. Now it has fallen into my own hands it should be, once again falling into my own hands. Foam Siki followed by Gue to the third floor of the front hall and gazed at the phoenix statue standing on the stone pillar. It faces the sun, with huge wings spread out, majestic, mysterious, immortal, like a guardian deity here. For Phoenix Star, the Foam family is a deity. Just in the previous life, the gods did not love it. Foam Siki gazed at the statue in front of the palace, and the warm morning sun fell on her face, as if establishing a connection with this place. Bai Yen watched the girl for a while, didn't disturb her, and went to see the Prime Minister alone. Feng Siki heard the footsteps of Bai Gui walking away, but did not move. She stared blankly at the phoenix, with even feathers carved to life, and an unprecedented heat wave surged in her heart. This strong emotion was even stronger and more passionate than when she first met Zhou Qin Feng. Feng Siki knew that he did not have the decisive determination of the founder of the Feng family, nor did he have the intelligence and knowledge of the kings of all dynasties. But at this moment, she knew very clearly that only she could protect this place. She must be strong and become a qualified queen as soon as possible, no matter what method is used. Feng Siki thought a lot for a moment, lowered his eyes, and without hesitation, turned inside. As soon as she entered the second meeting room, she was curiously scrutinized up and down by a group of people. On both sides of the black sandalwood long table in the second meeting room, men wear a uniform black suit and women wear a black long skirt. They are all handsome men and beautiful women, elegant gentlemen, and a gathering of heroes. Foam Siki looked at the scene, and the newly rising momentum suddenly shortened by half. They were dressed in morning clothes, and she came wearing casual clothes, which seemed a bit impolite. Foam Siki looked dejectedly at Bai Chi. She just thought that Bai Yen was just trying to familiarize her with the environment. Bai Yen looked at the girl standing in place, thought for a moment, and reached out to invite her in. Bai Gue also just found out that several ministers and members of the royal family were present, otherwise she wouldn't have brought her over. 
but since she has arrived, it's better for her to participate, after all, this is the last thing she can establish contact with her parents. Fong Siki saw Bai Chi's gesture, then looked at the dozen or so people on the conference table and lifted his leg over. Bai Bai gave way and went to the side to pull a chair. Seeing his actions, everyone was filled with curiosity and exploration, wondering who this girl was. The old man sitting in the chief seat glanced at the child sitting next to Bai Gui, but was not interrupted by her. He continued, the most important thing at the moment is the funeral time for the king and queen. The Prime Minister of Phoenix, Nicholas Rhodes, a 125-year-old elder, saw off three kings during his reign and is now the fourth. He holds a high position in the palace, and even the king has to give him three points of respect, so it is most appropriate for him to step forward and preside over the overall situation in this ownerless era, after all, there is no one in the royal family who can handle it. After the Prime Minister finished speaking, the people at the conference table lowered their heads and whispered, but no one responded directly. Fong Siki looked at the motionless Prime Minister in this silent awkwardness. In this era with an average lifespan of 150 years, Nicholas Rhodes can also be considered to have lived long. He has white hair, a handsome face full of wrinkles, a long white beard on his chin, and is wearing black Chinese clothes. He looks serious and imposing. Fong Siki looked at Nicholas Rhodes and wondered if Zhou Qing Fong had obtained his consent regarding his desire to become king. Zhou Qing Fong has a foreign surname. After marrying him, he had the right to succeed to the throne. However, if no one supported him, he would not have been able to secure the throne even after killing himself. So Zhou Qing Feng either gained the political support of the Prime Minister or the military power support of the Bai family. Otherwise, relying solely on the newly acquired inheritance rights and the Zhou family's family background, he would not be able to gain the recognition of the two supporters of royal power and the support of the citizens. The Bai family, after being killed, did not hesitate to resolve Zhou Qing Feng, which can be temporarily ruled out. Then only the Prime Minister remains. Prime Minister Nicholas Rhodes has excellent genes and received a higher education. Although she has fully utilized his abilities as Prime Minister during her tenure, Fong Siki still knows that he doesn't look up to him from the bottom of his heart. Compared to the queen who was raised by a scavenger and left alone, Zhou Qing Fong, the eldest son of a hereditary aristocrat, is more suitable to be the King of Phoenix Star. Fong Siki looked at the Prime Minister, lost in thought. She wasn't angry, she was thinking about what she needed to do to gain his support. Undoubtedly, Nicholas Rhodes, who served as Prime Minister for 96 years, is the oldest, most talented, and most strategic person here. Fong Siki knew that he didn't have a strong point. He relied on the Prime Minister for literature and the White family for martial arts. These two families are staunch supporters of the royal power of the Fong family, and we need to find a way to gain their recognition in this year. Not only the support from her bloodline, but also the recognition of her as the queen from the bottom of her heart. End of this chapter. Chapter 4. What My Brother Brings Back. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 4. What My Brother Brings Back Nikolai Rhodes waited for a while, but when no one answered his question, he looked at the white man beside him. General Bai, what do you think? Prime Minister, this matter is up to you, said Bai Gue, who was named, to Nicholas Rhodes a calm voice, with a hint of respect, made the dominance of this meeting clear. Nikolai Rhodes holds the highest position here, but the Bai family holds military power, and Bai Gue was the king's personal bodyguard during his lifetime, with an extraordinary relationship. Speaking of which, it was the Bai family that accompanied the ancestors of the Fong family to come here, which shows how strong the relationship between the Bai family and the Fong family is. The current king and queen have died, and there is no heir yet. That is the most influential person in the Prime Minister and the Bai family. Just now, everyone didn't respond to the Prime Minister's words and didn't dare to stand in line easily. By saying this, the meaning is to let the Prime Minister take charge of the overall situation. Nikolai Rhodes nodded and said, then it will be seven days. 
The decisive tone and specific time were probably decided long ago. There was no objection at the meeting table, and those who agreed expressed agreement. After Nikolai Rhodes finished speaking, he looked at the young Bai Gue in disgust, Major General Bai, on the day of the funeral, the Emperor Star may send a representative. You are still responsible for the safety of the palace. Bai Gue just gave him respect, and now this is in return. The meaning is that it is a matter of national security or the responsibility of your Bai family. They are each in charge and do not interfere with each other. The white man nodded and lowered his head. Once the time and respective responsibilities are determined, the purpose of this meeting is achieved. There was still a lot to do next, so the meeting ended without delay. At the end of the meeting, many people's gaze occasionally fell on the girl next to General Bai, curious about who she was, but due to the situation, they didn't ask much. After discussing the funeral at the beginning, I gossiped about who the girl was, showing little respect for the king and queen. Especially now that the identities of the prime minister and the Bai family are here, and both of them are present, saying one more word to anyone means standing in line. Nikolai Rhodes looked at the people who were slowly leaving the scene and knew what they were thinking. He looked at the child next to Bai Yu and directly asked, Bai Major General, who is this? Bai Yen looked at the quiet girl and said truthfully, my brother brought it back from outside. Did his brother bring it back from outside? Bai Shu, that steel straight man, how could he bring a girl back? Judging from her age, she shouldn't be his illegitimate daughter, right? If it's an illegitimate daughter, that makes sense. Bai Shu is not good at taking care of children. The general knows that his son has broken his leg in disorder, and his mother is not in good health. It seems that his brother can only help with it. Upon hearing Bai Qian's words, everyone succeeded in gossiping and satisfied with various speculations. Nikolai Rhodes looked at the beautiful big eyes and a well-behaved and sensible child, thinking about her relationship with Bai Shu. But he is over a hundred years old and also the prime minister, so he is not very interested in these things. Nikolai Rhodes nodded, indicating that he knew. When he left the second meeting room with Bai Yan and walked down the corridor, he said anxiously, this internal turmoil can be easily resolved, it's just an external concern. Major General Bai, since the king and queen are no longer here, can you return to your original position? Bai Gui's original job was as the commander of the Pioneer Cruiser. Nikolai Rhodes means that the Phoenix has no owner and is highly likely to be invaded by aliens. This great general cannot submit to the palace anymore. Nikolai Rhodes originally thought that upon hearing his words, Bai Gui would be happy to leave the palace that bound him and return to the place where he had achieved countless accomplishments, to continue his unfinished missions and ambitions. But, Prime Minister, I am just a bodyguard of the king and cannot return to my original position, said Bai Gui politely the person who removed him from his original position has died, and the person who can take him back to his original position now does not possess this ability. Nikolai Rhodes didn't demand anything from Bai Qi if he didn't have the fighting spirit. What are you planning to do next? Obviously, there are not many people in the palace anymore, and he is in need of personal protection from this great general. Bai Yen said, first investigate the causes of death of the king and queen, and then make plans. Upon hearing these words, Nikolai Rhodes's expression deepened with concern. It's also possible to investigate, but we need to conduct secret investigations and pay attention to safety. The white man nodded and lowered his head. Come downstairs. Fong Siki looked at the distant prime minister and his relatives as they walked back to the harem with Bai Gui. After pondering for a while, she deliberately asked, General Bai, taking care of me like this, shouldn't I really be your brother's child? Bai Yen lowered the curtain and looked at the girl without answering her question. He only said, you are currently living here, and I will be responsible for your daily life and other matters. As for the reason, I will tell you later. Foam Siki stopped and asked discontentedly, living here. How long will it be? Do I have to stay here for a long time? It's not about staying here for a long time, it's about staying here forever. 
Bai Yan looked at the girl with a frown and an unhappy face. You don't want to live here. Feng Siki raised his voice. Of course. You arrested me for no reason and didn't tell me the reason. This is just a bed made of gold, and it's not as comfortable as my own nest. Don't think about going back to your original home. Feng Siki looked expressionless at Bai Yu, who calmly and naturally said these words, and glared at him angrily. I will have someone take care of your grandfather. If you want, I can also bring him in to accompany you, Bai Yen said after thinking for half a second bring it in. No, 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 he was brought in by himself in his previous life and killed by Zhou Qingfeng. Feng Siki quickly said, just ask someone to take care of him. He's not used to living here. Bai Ting received her words and turned to call for the person on duty. Black Dome Upon hearing this, Hei Chiong immediately ran over and stood at attention to salute. I have sent you a document. You can personally explain the situation to the elderly person according to the address, and then ask two trustworthy people to secretly take care of him, Bai Yen said while operating on his phone Black Chiong said with a strong aura, Yes, sir. In front of her, Bai Yen confessed the matter and asked the girl, Do you have any further questions? Feng Siki looked at Hei Cheong who was running to handle this matter, and then at Bai Gui who was waiting for his answer. Is this, negotiating terms with her? The conditions that allowed her to stay here? Feng Siki turned his eyes and thought for a moment before saying, taking care of my grandfather is something you should do. If you want me to stay willingly and listen to you, I have another request. The point of this is, listen to what you say. Being obedient is the most important thing for a person, not one. In her previous life, she just didn't listen to him and everything went against him. He would do it several times a day. So Feng Siki thought that Bai Gui would definitely care about this. Sure enough. After half a second of silence, Bai Yen said, What requirements do you have? Feng Siki looked at the soldier standing guard at the door, then at Bai Ting and straightened his waist, saying, I want to study and go to a military academy. Previously, he begged himself to learn, but now, on the other hand, he should agree, right. Feng Siki did this not to please him, but to show his attitude. She wants to tell the Prime Minister and the Bai family that she is a positive and eager queen who loves learning, and that she can still be saved. Also, she does need to learn something, both mentally and physically. Feng Siki thought that if he went to the military academy to hone for a few months and encountered the situation of the previous life, how could he still pull last week's Qing Feng as a backing? The butler is very powerful and almost inseparable, but there are always times when she is not by her side. She is too weak and cannot do it. After Feng Siki finished speaking loudly, he clenched his fist and looked into Bai Gui's deep and handsome eyes, his heart beating like thunder. Why do you want to go to a military academy? Bai Yen looked at the girl in the sunlight with a strong and powerful voice Feng Siki said confidently, there's no money for reading or eating there. If it weren't for the lack of money to study, she would still have a primary school diploma. Bai Yen said, if you want to study, I can arrange a dedicated teacher for you. Feng Siki said firmly, I'm going to school. I don't have a child as big as you in elementary school. Feng Siki. I can't attend elementary school or college. It's so awkward. End of this chapter. Chapter 5. Immortal Bird Royal Security Forces. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 5 Immortal Bird Royal Security Forces, What is Your Purpose of Reading? Bai Yen asked the stunned girl if she wants to learn knowledge, he will customize specialized courses for her. If you're just going to school to experience the fun of being a student, then take her to school to explore. Feng Siki listened to Bai Gui's words and thought carefully for a while. Her purpose is very clear, but Bai Yen has not told her her true identity yet. As a garbage collector, she does not have so many ideas beyond her vision. Feng Siki gritted his teeth and thought for a while. 
Looking at his handsome face, he said with a lack of confidence, I want to be able to beat my arch-nemesis when I go back. Is that counted? Calculate, why not calculate? However, she is quite unique, restricted in her freedom by others, and still thinking about how to become bigger and stronger in the future. Bai Yan looked at the nervous and urgent girl and asked the soldiers to take his private aircraft away. Feng Siki wondered whether he had agreed or not. If you just want to learn how to fight, the military academy teaches too slowly, said Bai Yan she doesn't have that much time to learn from scratch, she must start directly from the beginning. Bai Yan took her onto his own aircraft and asked her to fasten her seat belt. I happen to be going to the army and taking you to take a look. If you're still interested after watching, just stay there and play. Play. It is indeed playing. What can she do in a regular army like that, who was killed halfway without any knowledge or skills? Isn't it just for fun? Feng Siki nodded joyfully and anxiously when he saw Bai Gui agree. Okay. Xinxi is able to join a regular and eight classic army, where she can make some friends, meet skilled military officers, understand the true thoughts of the general on the Feng family, and thus stabilize her throne. Anxiety is that she doesn't know if she can really make friends there. After all, she is not very good at making friends. Feng Siki sat in the passenger seat, gazing at the rising sun in the east, unsure if he had taken the right step. In her previous life, she detested the palace that was filled with dogma everywhere, the white man who forced her to learn, and the prime minister who clearly looked down on her but had to respect her. Therefore, everything she did was what white man and others wanted her to do. She was confused and didn't take the initiative to do anything. Besides marrying Zhou Qingfeng. But the only thing she took the initiative to do not only killed herself, but also harmed everyone on the Phoenix Star. A planet that loses its voice is one that loses sovereignty. Where can freedom and peace come from a planet without sovereignty? Where does it come from to live and work in peace and contentment? Feng Siki thought a lot. She turned her head to look at the flying aircraft, with a handsome profile and a messy white face under the sun, hesitating to say something. Here we are, Bai Ting said at this moment upon hearing his words, Feng Siki swallowed them back into his stomach and looked at the towering building built by the mountains and rivers. The Royal Security Forces of the Undead Bird Located in the east at a latitude of 90 degrees, 800 kilometers away from the palace, covering an area of 126,000 square meters, it can accommodate 10,000 to 20,000 people. It has three major branches. The Army, Navy, and Space, which not only ensure the safety of the royal family, but also provide excellent talent for other armies. It can be said that it is not only the reserve of the royal family, but also the benchmark of all armies. Everyone who graduates from here is a key focus of Fengxing's attention. Feng Siki sat in the passenger seat, birds that I view of the entire circular building in the Phoenix Totem of Desire, couldn't help but feel excited. She thought Bai Gui was going to an ordinary military inspection, but she didn't expect it to be here. The Royal Security Force of the Undead Bird is the most powerful unit on Phoenix, with almost no news about it, but the legend about it has never ceased, and it is a legend in folklore. Why is it said to be a legend? Because it does not exist on the map of Phoenix, it is said that only the permission of the king can view it. So, for hundreds of years, citizens have only heard its voice, not seen its person or place, and even thought it was not real. In the past, Feng Siki would have known which side the door of this army was facing, and he would have been able to scream at his enemy and kneel down to call him dad. Now she not only knows, but also sees, and wants to go in. This is really exciting. Feng Siki was so excited that he forgot his identity and also forgot what he was here for. She only regained her senses slightly when the system's cold synthesizer started. Identity verification passed. Welcome, Major General Bai. You can park your aircraft on the T.1 platform. Colonel Cruz Miller is waiting for you in the T.303 conference room. As the system prompted, a light blue opening appeared in the originally clean and azure sky. 
After the passage was opened, Baigui flew straight into the military airspace. Fong Siki saw if he had slowed down, pressed the bend and shuddered around the building, firmly stopping at the white crane on the T.1 platform with the military logo printed on it. He shouted in his heart, truly handsome. She also wants to learn how to fly airplanes. Fong Siki followed by Chi onto the sightseeing elevator and saw fighter planes neatly parked on the ground. He thought it would be better to learn fighter planes, as they are more useful. Waiting in the conference room. Fong Siki saw the huge cruiser on the holographic screen, well, this thing is cool, but she shouldn't be able to learn it. In the conference room, Colonel Cruz Miller saw Bai Gue and immediately stood up to salute him, then said, Sir, you haven't been here for a while. Bai Jian went in to shake hands with him and looked at the battleship cruiser on the holographic screen. How's it going? Cruz Miller is about the same age as Bai Gue, in his thirties, with deep and three-dot-dimensional facial features and a pair of cold blue eyes, but he is very enthusiastic. Cruz Miller immediately introduced himself to Bai Gue upon hearing his words. After preliminary testing, there are no obvious problems with our self-developed battleship cruiser. However, in order to be officially put into use, some practical inspections are still needed. He said, swiping the holographic screen and tirelessly introducing himself. Look at this defense system, this weapon installation, this light speed leap, they are all the most advanced technologies on the planet so far. Fong Siki looked at the parameters on the holographic screen and then at the proud Colonel Cruz Miller, but he was not optimistic. There is a certain gap between it and Emperor Star. Upon hearing her words, Cruz Miller realized that there was still someone in the conference room. Cruz Miller looked at the beautiful girl at the door and asked by Gue. This person is not from him, it can only be brought by Major General Bai. But how did he come here to take care of a child? What is the relationship between this child and him? This is a first-class classified military base. Without any introduction, Bai Yen said to the girl, don't compare yourself to giants, otherwise you will lose the motivation to move forward. Cruz Miller nodded in agreement and said to the girl, you don't know how difficult it is for us. Emperor Star is recruiting top talents in interstellar scientific research at a high cost, and then implementing a core technology blockade. It is still a happy thing that we can build such a battleship now. Give them some more time, they can definitely follow the footsteps of God Star. It's just a pity. Unfortunately, the king and queen died. Thinking of this, Cruz Miller's expression darkened a lot. The phoenix lost its king, which means they don't have more time. Bai Gue felt Cruz Miller's low mood and said to the girl at the door, let's go out for a while. I'll talk to Colonel Miller about something. Fong Siki nodded and gestured to Cruz Miller before leaving the conference room. Cruz Miller waited for the child to leave, closed the door, and saw that it was white. Sir, are there any new instructions? Otherwise, he usually wouldn't come back here. Now he's here, probably due to some new changes in deployment. Bai Ting sat on the chair and looked at his worried friend. Can't you come and take a look? Cruz Miller Fuer. When is it? Don't joke with me anymore. No joke, no instructions. Really not. Cruz Miller saw him not speaking and cautiously continued to ask, really not. With his years of training and understanding of combat, if he were to be so calm, it might not be true. Otherwise, with his personality, how could he sit here and waste time with him? Bai Yi leaned back in the chair and looked at him for a while. There is indeed an indication. Cruz Miller immediately sat opposite him. What instructions? Is war about to start? Seven days later, after the funeral of the king and queen, I need a new squad to go to the palace for safety support. Is that all? Cruz Miller was surprised. Just this matter, will you come and run it yourself? Is his phone broken, or is there no signal at this base? Just this matter, Bai Gue confirmed to the incredulous Cruz Miller. Cruz Miller looked at him for a while, 
confirming that he had no other instructions, and then thought of the girl who had just gone out. Cruz Miller thought for a while and curiously asked, this is your first time bringing someone here. Is she a good seedling, or is she your wandering child? End of this chapter. Chapter 6. Fighting in the Base. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 6 Fighting in the Base Cruz Miller thought for a while and curiously asked, This is your first time bringing someone here. Is she a good seedling, or is she your wandering child? Forget the good seedlings. It is indeed a wandering child, but not his. By Gui didn't want to deceive him, he just said, I'll tell you later. The less he talks, the more curious he becomes. Cruz Miller wanted to use his friend's identity to gossip more, and Bai Gui received a communication. It's General Bai Xu's brother. Bai Ting connected to Shi Sun and said to the person over there, I have something to do at noon, so I won't go back for dinner. Bai Xu said, It's not about eating. Would it be convenient for you to talk now? Bai Yen looked at Cruz Miller. Cruz Miller was very witty and greeted Bai Xu before leaving the meeting. He closed the door and didn't want to know what Bai Xu had to say to Bai Yen alone. He only remembered the girl who had just been taught by Bai Yen with childlike innocence. Cruz Miller knew that there was probably no way for Bai Gui to ask a single question, and he could only start from the children. Well, where did the little girl go? Compared to the dull conference room, Fong Siki really wants to go out and play. But when she saw the cruiser confidently displayed by Cruz Miller, her excitement just now dissipated. In the second half of Fong Siki's reign as queen, due to the increasingly tense situation, Bai Gui showed her and explained the strength of various planets. The technology of Emperor Star is beyond the reach of all planets. If it weren't for the balance of 20.4 stars, he wouldn't want to cause the collapse of the Federal Empire or be invaded by other planets due to the war. How could he consider a small Phoenix star? For over 900 years, Phoenix has always adhered to the constraints of peace, and its military and weapons are not the main development targets. They can't beat not only Emperor Star, but also the other 20 stars. Fong Siki sat on the edge of the playground, propping his chin up, looking at the beautiful fighter jets and sighing. She didn't want to be the queen for a year without any heart or soul before. Now she's thinking about it, always worried that there might be war anytime, anywhere. It's really frustrating. When Feng Siki was worried about the country and the people, several soldiers wearing black military uniforms walked from a distance. There were four soldiers in total, three men and one woman, chatting and laughing uncontrollably. The man walking at the front is about 178 tall, with a slightly round face and two small dimples when laughing. He was the first to see a child sitting by the playground sunbathing from a distance, so he whistled and bumped into a nearby brother. Look at that. His brother is 1.82 meters tall, handsome and somewhat rogue, but his military uniform sets him off as handsome and ruffian. He let out a yelp when he saw the girl. Where did this little white rabbit come from? It's so beautiful. The only female soldier also tilted her head and looked around. New recruits. Hui Yen, with a round face, said, those who can appear here are either veterans or new recruits, right? The handsome Qin Jiyu said, or maybe it's the child of some leader. Female soldier Bi Sanchua said, I haven't seen any leader's child come to Li before, most likely it's a new recruit. I can't feel her spiritual power, said the man who has never spoken and is also the tallest man here, looking at the sighing girl from a distance upon hearing his words, all three of them turned their heads to look at him. Feng Yi looked at them three and nodded in agreement. Hui Yen was surprised. Can't even you feel it. I thought it was my problem. Qin Jiyu smiled. That's interesting. She's either an S.level king or a mentally drained waste. Don't just say, let's go, ask her to go. When they were in the past. The other soldiers wearing white space suits were one step ahead of them and had already started talking to people. A soldier of medium build, with mediocre features and small eyes, 
hugged his hands and said to the people around him, Believe it or not, I can take care of her in five minutes. His companions quickly said, Don't be fooled. Our excellent achievements in space soldier bubble girl don't want to be dragged down by you. Soldier Wang Chi, with small eyes, said to her companion, then you should keep an eye on it. Wang Chi walked over and smiled at the girl sitting by the playground, saying, Sister, are you lost? Feng Siki lifted the curtain and looked at his small green bean-sized eyes, not wanting to talk to him. From childhood to adulthood, she had seen so many hypocritical people that she didn't want to waste her lips and tongue with them. Wang Chi was stunned when she saw her face, and then became even more determined. Which department are you from? I'm from the space department. I'll take you back. Feng Siki said expressionlessly, thank you, no need. Wang Chi squatted down, propped up her chin, and looked at her delicate eyebrows, beautiful eyes, and stunning face. Without giving up, she said, I've finished training and happen to have time. Feng Siki frowned and looked at him. Before this, she had already started beating him up. Wang Chi chuckled and said, no need to be embarrassed, it's just a matter of convenience. Hey, your mom. Feng Siki looked at him and stood up with a few companions behind him. These people, she definitely can't beat them. But she can't afford it, she can avoid it. Wang Chi saw her stand up and thought she agreed, so she reminded her, you should be a technical soldier, right? The technical department is over there. Feng Siki ignored him and turned around to go upstairs. Wang Chi held her hand. Wrong, this tea building is the officer's office. Damn it, she can't bear it anymore. When Foam Siki grabbed his hand, his backhand was a punch in the eye. Her punch was fast and fierce. Not only did Wang Chi fail to dodge, but also his companions behind him, as well as Hui Yan and others who walked by, were quite surprised. Wang Chi was fiercely beaten, covering her eyes, and her face suddenly turned fierce. Stinky bitch, what are you pretending to be? You're just being. Foam Siki swung his fist again, interrupting his insulting and obscene language. But she missed the punch. Wang Chi grabbed her hand and punched her in the stomach directly. As she bent down in pain, he picked up her clothes and watched as she frowned in pain. Isn't it very arrogant? Just these two things. Hmm. Foam Siki looked at his proud expression and tilted his head back, smacking his face. Wang Chi was hit on the head by her, and her nose blood flowed profusely. Foam Siki threw the person backwards, then started running and rushed over, knocking him down. The sound of bang. Wang Chi was washed to the ground with the back of her head, almost missing the chance to see her grandmother. Foam Siki gave Wang Chi a fierce beating. Wang Chi reacted and punched her in the head amidst the chaos. He pulled the person down hard and turned over to beat her. Don't look at the two players who were playing quite down dot to dot earth and declare, it can be ruled out that they are s dot level bosses. Hui Yan looked at the two people who were beating each other to death and said hesitantly, but if it were a useless person without mental strength, wouldn't it be quite impressive to beat Wang Qi so badly? Qin Jiu looked at the two people who had been beaten to death and asked them, guess who will win? Don't say, girls support girls. Hui Yan said, I guess it's a girl too. Qin Jiu said, if you criticize her crazily, I will also bet on her. The silent Feng Yi spoke out, I bet on Wang Qi. End of this chapter Chapter 7 Your child was beaten by someone. You are listening at Novel Full Dot Audio. Chapter 7 Your child was beaten by someone as a group of soldiers gathered around, betting on who would win. At this time, T.303 Conference Room. After Colonel Cruz Miller left, Bai Xu said to his younger brother, I just asked my mother about the Queen, and I think you should be interested. The wife of General Bai and the Queen are close friends. Bai Ting saw his mother appearing in the video and sat up. Mom, do you know about this? Madam Bai is 60 years old this year, 
but due to years of seclusion, she looks like she is only in her forties. She didn't look very good, but when she saw her little son, a smile still appeared on her face. Listen to your brother, have you found an heir? Feng Xing has already confirmed this matter and there can be no mistake, Bai Xu said to his mother after looking at the troubled Bai Xu upon hearing these words, Madam Bai's face was filled with either joy or sorrow. Although she doesn't go out often her family is afraid of disturbing her recovery, there are few guests visiting, but this doesn't mean she doesn't know the current situation of Phoenix Star. The internal and external turmoil caused by the death of the current king and queen, with no one to succeed, added a lot of work to her husband and son. How could she not know the importance of an heir? But since she has found a new heir, why is she not happy instead? Bai Ting looked at his dazed mother. Is there any problem? Madame Bai looked at her youngest son who was being questioned and sighed. Besides the eldest prince and the second princess, the queen did indeed conceive a child. Upon hearing his mother's words, Bai Yen said in confusion, Why have you never heard of this before? Madame Bai hesitated for a while before saying, this was an accident. The queen only found out about her pregnancy when her child was six months old. By this time, the child had already formed and missed the golden time for genetic screening. Therefore, the queen and the king decided to give up screening and conceive the child naturally. Skip gene screening and conceive naturally. Upon hearing these words, Bai Shu was stunned and looked at Bai Shu beside his mother. Bai Shu clearly knew about this before calling him. Madam Bai nodded helplessly as she looked at her surprised little son. You heard me right, it's just natural reproduction. This is extremely risky and has provoked those who advocate for the perfect gene, so this matter has not been made public until we have a child. But the child was sent to the emergency room right after birth and was not rescued in the end. A life that was originally unknown to the outside world, now that it has died, there is no need to make it public again. It is now clear that the child did not die and became the only heir to the planet. A person who carries several or hundreds of inferiority genes from birth is about to become the Queen of Phoenix. After a long silence, Bai Ting said to his depressed mother, Mom, I know now. You go rest first. Wait for Madame Bai to leave. Bai Xu sat down, leaned against the back of the chair, legs resting on the table, and looked down at his younger brother. What do you plan to do? Bai Gui did not answer his brother's question. While he was lost in thought, Colonel Cruz Miller sent him a message. Cruz Miller. Sir, your child has been beaten. Bai Yen looked at the message of Cruz Miller in the lower right corner and remained silent. It's not strange to fight here with a person who has over a hundred illegal records. Bai Bai ignored Miller's message. After thinking for a while, he used his authority to call out Phoenix Star and asked if it knew what his mother had just said. On the holographic screen, a humanoid Phoenix 3 dot dimensional image was revealed after two seconds. General Hui Bai, I haven't found this record. Can you find out which hospital the Queen has been to during this time period? Bai Yen continued to ask Feng Xing said, 17 years ago during this period, the Queen and the King did not visit any hospital. An unexpected event. Since the King and Queen do not want to make this matter public, and the child is declared dead, they will naturally erase all traces of her to avoid arousing opinions from supporters of the perfect group. Bai Xu solemnly reminded his younger brother, our queen is a creature nurtured entirely by nature. Due to the radiation of the solar system, after leaving Earth, humans no longer naturally breed in order to adapt more tenaciously to the survival of new planets, and all adopt genetic screening interventions. That is to say, when a child is still in their stomach and has not yet formed, they will eliminate those weak and unhealthy genes. And it is precisely because genetic screening is expensive and not something that ordinary people can do, which leads to wealthy people becoming stronger and those living at the bottom becoming weaker. But precisely because of this, even the lower class people will devote their whole family's efforts to intervene in their own genes for their children. Something like Fong Siki, which is completely non-dot interference, only happens to the poorest families in the southern city, 
and now it actually happens to the royal family. Real numbers are rare. Never heard of it. Bai Xu looked at his brother who didn't respond, and then at Feng Xing who had no emotions. What should we do now? Let her inherit the throne. Feng Xing said without emotion, General Bai, she is the only heir and must inherit the throne. Bai Xu frowned, not understanding. Even if she is the only heir, what can she change? She probably won't even live to adulthood. The eldest prince and the second princess are both mentally strong. Not to mention the king and queen, the bodyguards around them are A.level soldiers with exceptional combat effectiveness. They were all killed for no reason. As a child without mental strength, once they reveal their identity, it is unknown how many dangers they will encounter. It's up to me whether she can live to adulthood, Bai Yen whispered his failure to protect the king and queen was his dereliction of duty, and this girl was his second chance. Bai Xu knew what his brother was thinking and comforted him. The incident between the Grand Prince and the Second Princess has been investigated for two years but has not been found. The deaths of the King and the Queen are not assassination or poisoning, and this technique is not something that ordinary people can do. Don't blame yourself too much. With this technology and fearlessness of war, only Emperor Star has the courage. It's just that there's no evidence for this kind of thing. Phoenix, as one of the weaker troops in the Federation's 24 stars, doesn't even qualify for angry questioning. Speaking of which, if it weren't for federal constraints, they would probably have been ruled by Emperor Star long ago. But since the other party adopts the form of assassination, it indicates that those people do not want to tear up the treaty yet. Bai Xu remains silent, not comforted by Bai Xu's words. For him, regardless of the reason, Dereliction of duty is dereliction of duty. Feng Xing looked at Bai Xu, who held an opposing attitude, and Bai Gui, who was not very positive. Two generals, it is necessary for me to remind you that she is the last phoenix and the only recognized heir of the Federal Empire. You, including me, must let her rise to power. The meaning of this is that even if you don't agree, she will be the king of this phoenix star unless she dies. Phoenix Star is a super-intelligent AI system designed to protect Phoenix Star. It controls all information and technology here, and of course, it strictly adheres to its own responsibilities, prioritizing the protection of the Phoenix family and ensuring the continuation of the throne. So if someone violates this first rule, it will eliminate all opponents, including those from the Bai family. Bai Xu's temple twitched and jumped. She is not only a weak group, but also possesses the most primitive stubbornness, laziness, and jealousy. Are you sure that her rise to power is not a disaster? Willfulness includes stubbornness, paranoia, and persistence, which indicates that she does not listen to advice. Laziness is characterized by laziness, greed, a tendency to get something for nothing, and a typical unwillingness to learn yet inability to do so. As for jealousy, it goes without saying that it is vain, flashy, and selfish, without much love. How can such a person inherit the throne? Bai Xu simply said, otherwise, we'll keep her outside. When she reaches adulthood, we'll arrange a man for her to get married and have children as soon as possible. We'll focus on nurturing the next generation. End of this chapter Chapter 8 800 Injuries to Enemies and 1000 Self-Losses You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 8 800 Injuries to Enemies and 1000 Self-Losses by Shu simply said, otherwise, we'll keep her outside. When she reaches adulthood, we'll arrange a man for her to get married and have children as soon as possible. We'll focus on nurturing the next generation. Bai Yen looked at his somewhat imaginative brother. We only have one year left. One year later, Emperor Star will naturally rule Phoenix Star and use all its resources here. When they all face difficulties. Feng Xing said, Generals, have you forgotten that the Queen has inherited the Phoenix bloodline? Speaking, play a video of the Feng family ancestors' combat power exploding. This is the head of the Phoenix family who discovered the Phoenix Star. He not only controls fire, 
but also has the ability to be reborn. Bai Shu doesn't eat this trick. It's been over 900 years now, and the Feng family's special ability over race has long been lost. Feng Xing said, it has always existed, but the generations passed down have become weaker. In the generation of the Grand Prince and the Second Princess, the Phoenix bloodline has completely disappeared. Now that the Third Princess inherits it and is trained, she will be an excellent and powerful king. Bai Shu holds no hope. Don't ignore the inheritance of genes, especially those with inferior traits, when they argued one person, one machine. I will make her a qualified king, said Bai Yi, who remained silent for a long time only by allowing her to ascend can Phoenix Star maintain its independence, and guarding the Feng family has always been the responsibility of the Bai family. Moreover, currently it seems that the queen is obedient and loves learning, so there is no need to be too pessimistic. Feng Xing respectfully said, I'm glad General Bai can say that. Bai Yi said, I have a request. Please speak. To ensure the safety of the new king, please do not disclose her identity temporarily. Feng Xing said, Whatever concerns the king's safety, you have the final say. Bai Qi lifted the curtain and fixed his gaze on the phoenix star on the holographic screen. She was born naturally, permanently deleted from your records. Sorry, regarding the deletion of royal records, General Bai does not have sufficient permissions. Who has this permission? King, said Feng Xing, I can list it as a first.class security document for the royal family. Only General Bai has the permission to view it. Bai Bai nodded his head. Set it up. Received. The settings have been completed. Feng Xing finished his work and said to the person who was going to leave, Major General Bai, the former king left a last wish for you. Bai Qi is waiting for what comes after it. Feng Xing said, the former king said, although the treaty between you and him has expired, as a punishment for your dereliction of duty, after the heir appears, you still need to accompany him until the new king governs the country alone. That's why Feng Xing said before that he was glad he could take the initiative to teach the queen. Because this is his uncontrollable debt. Upon hearing these words, Bai Yan remained calm and reached out to turn it off. Bai Xu decisively turned off Feng Xing's younger brother and asked, What are you doing in the security forces? In short, Bai Yan said, Take the queen on a tour. And what about her? Fighting with people outside. Bai Xu reminded him. Keep a close eye on her, she's like a wild monkey. Don't be beaten to death by the people from your base. What is the difference between a child who lacks spiritual power and is still naturally born and made of glass? Thinking of what Cruz Miller had just said, Bai Yen immediately cut off his sight and strode out. Cruz Miller leaned against the window in the hallway, leaning over and watching the two people fiercely fighting below with relish. He heard the sound of the door opening and said to the person who came out, Sir, the person you brought is really brave. This doesn't sound like a compliment or a curse. Bai Yen looked at Cruz Miller's expression and went to the window. Under the window, the soldier's face was covered in blood, and the girl was not much better either. The soldiers here have the worst mental strength and are also B. level. They are well. trained and can go to the battlefield at any time. Who is her opponent? Bai Yen saw it and turned around to leave. He pressed the elevator and saw that it was on a high floor, so he took the stairs directly. Cruz Miller saw Bai Gui's calm face and hurriedly ran down the stairs, chasing after him and asking, Who the hell is this? Your brother hasn't been so nervous since he was beaten. Bai Yan asked him, Did you just look at him like that? Cruz Miller said, It's a violation to fight without permission. Anyway, they will be punished, so let's let them have a good fight first. He just didn't stop it, he just wanted to see if this girl he couldn't feel her spiritual power was a good seedling found by Bai Gui somewhere, or something about him. Now it can be confirmed that the relationship between this girl and Bai Yen is by no means ordinary. As Bai Gui and Cruz Miller descended the stairs, Wang Qi is still waving her fist, trying to beat the girl to death. Don't Sanshua, 
as he was about to kill someone, grabbed Wang Qi's back collar and waist belt, lifted the person up, and threw them out. With a bang sound, Wang Qi fell to the ground like a pig was killed by a fall. Wang Qi's companions were about to say something when they saw Hui Yan and Qin Jiu, who were looking at things with their chin raised, but they didn't take any action. The Army Department, Navy Department, and Space Department, among these three major branches, are the Comprehensive Department. The people in the Comprehensive Department are versatile and it's difficult for them to beat them. Don't throw Wang Qi away, pick up the girl's chin, and up close, see her face, which has been beaten to a clean nose and swollen face. The girl not only has an unattractive face, but even her eyes are bloodshot. Don't take a closer look at her face for a moment, then click. What a pity, I haven't had a chance to take a closer look yet. Feng Siki frowned as he looked at the female soldier in front of him, with short, neutral hair, sharp temperament, and handsome enough to bend people. She wanted to say something, as if suppressing something. Don't be considerate and say, if you want to thank me, just go on a date with me. Before she could finish speaking, Feng Siki couldn't help but cough and sprayed blood on his handsome sister's face. Hui Yan laughed heartily when he saw it. Third sister, you scared me so much that I vomited blood. Qin Zilv also said, Third sister, I think she should like my model. Feng Yi hesitated and said, How about saving people first? Don't San Shua wipe the blood off his face. He wanted to see how the girl was doing when he heard footsteps coming from afar. Upon hearing this commotion, the faces of several people on the playground became visibly tense. This is the official's office building, and those who come out from here are likely to be at the level of being able to lock them up in a small black room. And from this urgent sound, they felt a sense of impending danger. Bai Gui arrived at the playground and didn't look at the soldiers standing still. He quickly walked towards the motionless people on the ground. The girl's right hand twisted eerily, her face stained with blood, and there was no clean spot in the blue and purple. Her narrow and large eyes were tightly closed, without any signs of struggle. Upon seeing this scene, Bai Yen was stunned and quickly picked up the dying girl, walking towards the medical room. Don't be so close to San Shuo. She looked at Bai Gui, who was almost carefully picking up the girl, and watched him walk away quickly, then looked at Cruz Miller in confusion. Not only be San Shua, but also Hui Yan, Qin Jilu, Feng Yi, and several soldiers from the space department looked at Captain Miller in confusion. Why is General Bai here? What is his relationship with the girl? This crazy girl, shouldn't she be his little girlfriend? If this is really the case, it would be a huge surprise from the security department. Cruz Miller met their gaze, straightened his voice, and shouted at several space department soldiers. All locked down for three days. After Cruz Miller finished speaking, he looked at the soldier who was thrown out and lay pretending to be dead. Lieutenant Wang Chi, after going to the medical room, went to receive the punishment himself. Those who engage in unauthorized fights here will not only be locked up for a week, but also receive a training package. The meaning is that Wang Qi needs to first treat her injury, then go for training, treat any injuries after training, and then go to confinement after recovery. In short, it's really tragic. Cruz Miller punished several members of the space department and looked at the Funya group. Waiting for punishment, right? He yelled at me. Hui Yan immediately said, we're leaving now. Goodbye, sir. After speaking, he quickly took Qin Jilu and others for a walk. Cruz Miller drove everyone away and, thinking of his pale face just now, nervously followed him to the medical room. If the person brought by the chief really gets beaten up here, it won't be so easy to deeply reflect. End of this chapter Did you pick it up from the trash can in chapter 9? You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Did you pick it up from the trash can in Chapter 9? In the medical room. Top of the line medical equipment performed a full body examination on an unconscious girl in bed, revealing over 20 minor injuries, 3 fractures, and 1 internal injury. 
The injuries on the girl's face and body are okay and can be repaired directly with instruments. Take care of the two broken ribs and dislocated hands after connecting them. There is mild splenic and gastric bleeding in the abdomen. If it is more severe, an open hole surgery will need to be performed. Bai Yen looked at the pale-faced girl lying in the treatment room and asked, What's the name of that soldier, after Cruz Miller entered a cold voice, without any emotional arousal. Cruz Miller looked at the various data of the girl's body on the instrument monitoring screen and candidly said, Wang Chi. People from the Space 3 department, who came in this year, have only B. level mental strength, but have achieved remarkable results in space operations. Let him return to his original unit. In a concise and concise sentence, Bai Yi concluded his lengthy introduction. Upon hearing these words, Cruz Miller said unexpectedly, Will this punishment be too severe? Is it heavy? Bai Yen turned around and looked at him coldly. Colonel Miller, does the security department have any dogma that teaches soldiers to kill citizens of the planet? If it weren't for someone stopping her, if it were a little later, she would be a corpse now. Cruz Miller looked at the girl in the treatment pod and hesitated, saying, It's not enough to kill, is it? This is just a fight between soldiers, it's just that Wang Chi hit harder. Bai Yen asked in reverse, Is she a soldier? Obviously, she is not. As a soldier, if you don't succeed in teasing ordinary citizens, you will resort to violence. Such an extreme nature does not conform to the safety regulations of the military. Cruz Miller is reconsidering the punishment for Wang Chi. The medical room heard an AI prompt sound. Treatment is over. Precautions. Firstly, the injured person needs to rest for more than two days due to chest fractures and visceral injuries. Secondly, the injured person has fragile genes, low self-healing ability, and slow hematopoietic system. Try to avoid injury and heavy bleeding as much as possible. With the AI, the cabin door opens. Cruz Miller, upon hearing the AI's prompt, was surprised and chased by Gue, asking, genetically fragile. Has low healing ability. Is there still a problem with the hematopoietic system? Sir, did you pick up this child from the trash can? A safe slum, people without genetic screening. How could this person be related to Bai Yen? He brought it here. This is the Royal Security Forces, not a tourist attraction. Bai Yen glanced at the surprised Cruz Miller. The hematopoietic system is slow. He said, picked up the girl, and placed her on the hospital bed outside. Cruz Miller followed behind him and said, slow is problematic. Bai Yen said, it's the comparison with the standards here that makes it slow. For a normal person, she is healthy, even extremely healthy. Cruz Miller looked at Bai by pouring water, washing towels, and wiping the girl's face, and suddenly felt that whether she had any problems was secondary, but mainly, their relationship. If he doesn't clarify this matter today, he will never sleep well in his lifetime. Cruz Miller pulled up a chair, propped his head up, and looked at the white hair that meticulously served the girl. Then, he saw that there were no scars on the bed, revealing her true beauty. After thinking for a long time, Cruz Miller frowned and asked seriously, To be honest with me, is this your new conversation partner? Bye Bye washed the towel clean, looked at her serious friend, and then looked at the girl on the bed. He thought for a while. You can understand that she is my new boss. Cruz Miller was surprised. New boss. Who the hell is she and who made you do this? Bai Yen said, My brother. General Bai. The one who, due to a soldier's mistake, was chased by pirates and threw the entire crew of the spaceship onto a barren planet, then drove the spaceship back to the space war on his own, General Bai Shu. Cruz Miller's mouth twitched. He doesn't look like a deceitful white man, and then he looks at the unconscious girl on the bed. So, this girl's crazy criticism is somewhat similar to General Bai. But, the child of General Bai, shouldn't he lack mental strength? But if it were Bai Yan's little girlfriend, at such an old age, he wouldn't dare to be public about dating. 
when Cruz Miller was wondering if he should believe by Chi's words. A soldier walked in and saluted by Gui and Cruz Miller, speaking respectfully and loudly, report to Commander, General Bai, the latest instructions. Bai Xu has his own army, and his instructions are usually those that are difficult and complex tasks, specifically reserved for personnel from the security department to practice. Cruz Miller heard the soldier's words and immediately set off. He took two steps and turned to the white man in the room, saying, Sir, since you're here, come with me. Bai Yen ignored him. Cruz Miller said, She's out of danger and there won't be any problem. Bai Yen just took her away in front of so many people. If there were still people who couldn't help but feel that it was not good for her, it would really be seeking death. Besides, this is a military unit, not a gathering place for terrorists, there is not so much danger. Bai Yen looked at the girl who was sleeping very quietly and wanted to come here for her true purpose. She left with Cruz Miller. Feng Siki had a dream. In her dream, she wore the wedding dress and returned to the bronze wudong tree. She stood under the tree, looking up at herself who had died on top. Watching blood flow down her body, trickling down the tree trunk, converging on the platform, and finally dripping down the shattered glass. Blood dripped on her face bit by bit, and then the cold liquid slid to her lips, seeping into her mouth, making her feel. Like sweet dew. Would drinking one's own blood feel good? Fong Siki was so scared that he wanted to vomit, but no matter how hard he tried, he couldn't open his mouth. At this time, in the medical room, there was a separate ward next to the hospital bed. A few soldiers were surrounded in front, back, left, and right. Hui Yen approached and looked at the girl on the bed, asking anxiously, why hasn't she woken up yet? Don't feed all the water in the dropper into her mouth. I also fed the nutrient solution and rested for another two hours. Why should I wake up? Qin Jiu embraced his chest with both hands and looked at the sleeping person. General Bai used the highest level treatment chamber, so she should be able to wake up immediately and recover as usual. But now the girl in bed is like a sleeping beauty. Girls are really good. Looking. In this era of rampant group screening, their appearance is becoming increasingly high. Quality with the evolution of genes. Even in units with mental strength at or above level B, this girl without mental strength still has a very outstanding appearance. Especially, her beauty, with piercing thorns, is like a rose in the wilderness. Wild and wild. Yet fragile. Don't lean your elbows against your legs, support your head, and look at the people on the bed. Wang Qi hit too hard. Qin Jiu said, I prove that she moved her hand first. Hu Yen stared closely at the delicate face of the girl and said thoughtlessly, She's so weak, can't we let her? Qin Jiu grabbed his back collar and pulled him up. Her saliva is about to drip on her face. Ah, really? Hui Yen immediately wiped his mouth and found that there was none. Feng Yi stood by the bedside, watching the girl's eyelashes tremble slightly like a small fan, reminding them. I'm about to wake up. The girl on the hospital bed moved her eyes and seemed to have tried several times with force. Finally, under everyone's attention, she opened her eyes. End of this chapter Chapter 10 Visiting the Base You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 10 Visiting the Base Fong Siki woke up from the absurd dream mirror and when he opened his eyes, he saw several handsome men and beautiful women above his head, careful not to jump up and down in fear. What's going on here? Hui Yen saw her with a bewildered expression and explained thoughtfully. We are here to visit you. Upon hearing his words, Fong Siki was taken aback and looked at the handsome sister sitting at the bedside with an aggressive demeanor. She remembers, it seems like she saved herself. Don't face her with beautiful eyes that seem to be full of stars, curling your lips and smiling. Hi little beauty, if you don't wake up, I'll kiss you. Qin Jiu looked at the surprised girl with a small open mouth and coughed loudly, saying, What's your name? What's your relationship with Major General Bai? This is what they came here for. 
don't be one or two, just look at the little beauty and don't remember what you're doing. Upon hearing these words, Fong Siki lifted the curtain to look at the elegant and mischievous man by Jing, who was handsome. Who are you? She spoke, her gaze fixed on the end of the bed, tall and thin, with an exceptionally outstanding temperament in the man among them. Fong Yi met the girl's clear and transparent eyes, without any movement, as she looked at her. Hui Yan saw the girl looking at Fong Yi and took the opportunity to say, His name is Fong Yi, and he is the leader of our group. My name is Hui Yan, Hua Tzu Bing's Hua, and all Yan's subordinates are from Yan's Yan. The handsome guy next to me is Qin Jiyu. The person across from me is called Bisan Shua, and we all call her third sister. Fong Siki listened to his introduction, propped up the bed, sat up, and formally said, My name is Siki. Hui Yan asked, Feng Ming, the Qi of Qishan. That's also the case. Feng Siki thought for a moment and said, My grandfather said it's the Qi of entering and leaving the Xiangxi, where the wheat and ears are divided. The split ears of wheat are auspicious signs, symbolizing a bountiful harvest, not Qishan, which can accommodate phoenixes. Hui Yan nodded and asked with concern, Siki, what is your relationship with Major General Bai? Fong Siki heard this question again and looked at his few people seriously. Are you very concerned about this? Don't smile and say, we care more about you. This may sound true, but at first glance, it turns out to be false. They don't even know each other, where do they care? Fong Siki knew that they had come to buy Gue, and after thinking for a moment, he said directly, obviously, you can't ask him directly, that's why you came to block me, right? Hui Yan snapped his fingers. You guessed it right. He had just finished speaking when he was stabbed in the eye by Bi Sanshua and Qin Jiyu. Feng Siki looked at them. Just a little more. If you show me around here, I'll tell you about my relationship with Major General Bai. How is it? Visit here. Is it possible to visit here casually? This is a first level secret base on the planet. Ku. Cool. General Bai has brought her here, she should be able to see it, right? Fong Siki looked at the hesitant people and lifted the blanket, saying, since it doesn't work, let's just forget about it. Hey, no, 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 no. Hui Yanlian was taken and pushed back to bed. Isn't it just visiting the base? We didn't say, no, dot. He said goodbye to San Shua, Qin Jiyu, and Feng Yi. He can't bear this disaster alone, he needs three people to come. After thinking for a moment, Bei Sanshua and Qin Jiyu looked at Feng Yi, implying that he would come up with an idea. Feng Yi looked at the girl for a while and spoke out, deal. If Feng Siki receives Feng Yi, he immediately gets off the bed. Let's go. She couldn't wait, as if afraid they would turn back later. Even Hui Yan, who wanted to take her to play, looked at Feng Yi with concern, wondering if they would die in this beautiful woman's scheme. Feng Yi didn't pay attention to Hui Yan's suggestion and went out with the girl, asking her where she wanted to visit first. Feng Siki looked at the uniforms on their bodies. Let's start with you. I see that your uniform is different from the person I hit. Hui Yan explained to her. There are four major departments here, the white one is the space department, the dark green one is the army department, and the dark blue one is the navy department. As for us, we are from the comprehensive department. Feng Siki looked at them. Are you doing odd jobs? Hui Yan was taken aback by her simple question. Qin Jiyu said, you can understand it that way. They need to participate in the training tasks of any department, not just doing odd jobs. Feng Siki continued to ask, can you fly a fighter jet? Qin Jiyu said, yes, we can. However, fighter jets are a strong point of the Ministry of Space. Why don't I take you there to take a look? Ministry of Space. Just beat up the people there, should we go to their territory now? He wants to cause trouble. Feng Siki looked at Qin Jiyu, who was elegant and handsome, but did not fall into his trap. I would like to take a look at your department first. 
After she finishes visiting the comprehensive department, she can go to the space department. At that time, Bai Yan went back to the medical room and didn't see herself, so she should be searching for her all over the base. There is Bai Yan present. If those people in the space department really have opinions about themselves, no matter what, they must first accept them. Who is the direct leader of the security forces? Bai Gui served as an instructor here for a period of time, then went out to fight in all directions. Finally, for some unknown reason, he was removed and became the king's personal bodyguard, as well as managing this place. The fact is similar to what Feng Siki had anticipated. But Bai Gui didn't just find out she wasn't in the ward to find someone, he ran into her directly at the space department. The task assigned by Bai Shu to Cruz Miller was to send someone to protect the researchers who went to Zaudi Star, assist them in completing the mission and returning safely. Zaudi Star is 50,000 light years away from Phoenix Star and is an unknown planet. It is unknown whether there are any dangerous creatures on it, whether it will encounter people from other planets, or even interstellar pirates. So, while this task may seem simple, it is actually complex. Cruz Miller looked at the task content and quickly had a delegation plan. To complete this mission, we need the cooperation of the Space Department and the Army Department, Cruz Miller said and looked at by Sher politely. Sir, what do you think? It's up to you to make a decision, Bai Yi gestured, then I'll confirm the candidate for the pilot first. Although Cruz Miller is the third person in charge here, he came from the Space Department, so he just spoke for Wang Qi. He just watched the excitement and didn't want to lose sight of a soldier, feeling somewhat guilty in his heart. When Kuruz Miller called out members of the B.Tier team, Shurikawa stereoscopized the Soap Earth Star on the holographic screen. Select people from the A-team. Cruz Miller paused in action. Is this task potentially challenging? If the life on the surface is real, the danger to land troops is quite high, and pilots with air combat experience are needed, said by Ting as he zoomed in on the picture and pointed to the parameter of the creature's size, unfortunately, all the members of Team A have gone out for training. Bai Yen looked at him. Cruz Miller said truthfully, I was borrowed by your brother. The Phoenix Star is currently in an unknown state, and seven days later it will be the funeral of the king and queen. People are needed both inside and outside, and almost all the soldiers from the first echelon of the three major departments have been borrowed. After thinking for half a second, Bai Yi said, gather all the pilots from the B.Level team. This is to raise one among the dwarves. Cruz Miller gave the order, thinking to himself, is this mission so dangerous? The people in the B team are also excellent, and they have all the necessary information here. Why do they have to personally choose people? Unless, unless he has other arrangements. Cruz Miller suppressed his doubts and didn't think much when he saw Bai Gui personally running here because he needed a few people. The instructions from the security department are like a mountain. For Cruz Miller, and for soldiers as well. Therefore, by the time Bai Gui and Cruz Miller arrived at the flight department, the hundred or so soldiers of the B.Echelon had already gathered. And Feng Siki, who had arrived here a few minutes earlier, almost thought he had violated the rules and was about to be beaten by them when these soldiers rushed out from all directions. Qin Jiyu saw their urgent gathering and said, why don't we go visit other places first after such a big battle? Hui Yan said anxiously, they are all pilots. They won't go to war, will they? Go to war. Feng Siki was slightly surprised and didn't want to leave. He wanted to see what was going on. Feng Yi looked at the soldiers on the playground and said, let's go. A cold word dispelled everyone's speculation. If it were a war, we wouldn't just gather people from Team B, so the space department should have received an important mission, which is not something they can explore. Feng Yi said to leave without any hesitation. Feng Siki had no choice but to keep up, but as soon as he turned around, he saw Bai Gui approaching. Sorry, I forgot to update yesterday. In the future, melons will be updated at 12 o'clock. If there is no update, please leave a message to remind me. Because melons are uploaded many days in advance, 
sometimes I think there is a saved draft TAT in the background. Of course, Melons will try their best to be careful to avoid such incidents from happening again, AMP, AMP, GT underscore AMP, 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 LT. End of this chapter.